Our first guest of the week is a Greco-American treasure whose smile could light up even the darkest demon's soul. Season one of his high school basketball series, Big Shot, is on Disney Plus now. Please say hello to John Stamos. <laughs> Walkout feels so good, you know, all these Zooms we Oh, doing. yeah, to come out and have people and uh, yeah, interact. It's so good. Nice to see all of you. You, you know, <laughs> like humans. One of the things, hey, man, one of the things I miss is the, the whisper. Do you ever, do you guys ever watch like when the, the guest comes out, the host? Remember, you, I, you know, they shake hands and go, Shh. Oh, yeah, you yeah, ever, right. You yeah. Ever, I miss, you ever wonder what we say? <laughs> I cut together something, Jim. Take, take, you take, did? Yeah. Okay. John Samos. <laughs> I just had sex with your wife, man. John Stamos. Heads up, Jim, I took three Viagra. You know what? Yeah. I remember that. I do remember <laughs> that. I, I sensed something was wrong. Full disclosure, I did not have sex with your wife. You but didn't. <laughs> I did take three Viagra. It was about a year or two ago when that was, and I think I'm good now. You know. Good to yeah. see you, Jim. Good to it's see very you. good to see you, too. I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, well, if you're going from three Viagra to a bone, yes. All right. <laughs> well, I was listening to you on Howard recently, and you guys were talking about On the about Howard this... Stern Show, yeah. Oh, Stern, sorry. And uh -huh. you were talking about this aura ring. Has he... Have you guys heard about this thing that he... Oh, purchased? the ring, I have it on. Yeah, my... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a... Yeah. I bought one because okay. of you guys, and it's supposed oh. to... Oh. Tell them about it. It's like it, it reduces stress. It, well... It helps your sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and some people, it increases stress. Well, that's the thing. I lost mine. <laughs> okay. Well, and I will I tell you what it, what it does. It measures your um, heartbeat, I guess. Uh -huh. I don't know what it does. But I like looking at the app afterwards. It says, you had a very good night's sleep yeah. last night. Well, I haven't because I can't find mine. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, it tracks your sleep. It tracks your, your stress level. It doesn't track itself. You can't find it. <laughs> that's right. You're right. I'm not kidding you. I've lost, and it's very expensive. I lost one, too. I had to buy this one a second time, yeah. What about, and Jennifer Aniston had it, too, I think, and she lost hers? Did she lose hers also? Yeah, and her salad or something. She you know what? I think maybe, I think maybe they want you to lose them. And by the way, when I talk about this, I yeah. keep expecting, like, the mail to come with a whole, like, box of these things. Yeah, you get nothing. So huh? I can relax. I almost lost it today. My wife said, something just dropped. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's my ring. Yes. Yes. Terrible. They should. You're right. They should so, be able to track them. Well, I'm more stressed and I have less sleep because of you and Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> How was your... How's your family, by the way? How's your boy, Billy? What oh, is he, three good. years old now? He's three, yeah. Your, uh, your Billy's I have a four-year-old Billy, yes. Whether, uh, how, do you, how do you keep him alive? Because... <laughs> um, he's trying to kill us, really, is yeah, what it is. is. Yeah, he and wakes up before the sun. Yeah, and... same with mine. Yeah. He's uh, potty trained pretty well. That happened fast, right? And, and I remember... I'll let you know. The ca oh, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> like, Mom, Caitlin's like, he's got it, he's got it. So I went and saw him. Dad, I got to pee. He went, he, my hand to God, he goes like, he, this is how he pees, on the toilet, like this. Really? Yeah. And, and he's like little Lord Fauntleroy, like, and then he goes into a downward dog like this. He's like, wipe, wipe. We're gonna rush in to wipe. Did he learn that from the cat or something? No, How from me. He, from you. Yeah. And the music, I, I don't know what you guys play your kids, but he, well, he loves Beetlejuice, so, and he met Beetlejuice. Oh, Beetlejuice. Yeah, the Beetlejuice. Okay. he met oh. Beetlejuice at Universal Studio. I think it was, it might have been Matt Damon, but that was Beetlejuice. Oh. And um, so he's become obsessed with Beetlejuice. And there's a, there's a Broadway musical version of, of Beetlejuice. Okay. And he got hooked on the, the, the musical, the soundtrack. And the opening song is, uh, it's called The Whole Being Dead Thing. Well, first, you know, you have to explain what that means, right? Being and dead. the lyrics yeah. are like, oh, uh, oh, you're gonna be fine on the other side. Die, 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 mother. <laughs> and to God. Are those really the lyrics? Yeah, and he's back there singing it. What? <laughs> and my wife, yes, and my wife, I was like, should we not? No, no, don't, don't make it a big deal because if he knows it's a bad word, he's gonna say it. Like, we're on she's the way to right. school. She's right, she's right. But at what point do you tell him? Because he's going to school saying to the teacher, die, mother. 
Nah, you yeah, know. when he when he says that to the teachers right, okay, right. and show and tell, don't give him a guitar to show and tell. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's wow. Yeah, because you it, know what? Happens, Sometimes right? you do hear things and then um, you don't want them to hear, but they hear everything yeah, and right, they know yeah. everything. Yeah. But if you react in any way, like we watched E. T. Right. and the kids say penis breath, and my kids just they were so delighted. <laughs> I could just see you this. and Molly though. You were just like. Like yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, here we go. I just knew <laughs> they were just like, oh, yes, penis breath. And now it's part of their vocabulary, you know? Oh, right, right. They also love saying the word butthole. That is another word they love. It's a funny word. And right? for me, it butthole. is a funny word, but it's a step too far. It's like, you know, um, butt's fine, but then when it gets into that, like, that's too yeah, much. Yeah, too much. But the more I try to tell them that it's too much, the more they say it, the right? The more they say yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Well, we ought to get rid of them, all the things. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I love it. I you know, I'm a, you know, I'm, Are you I'm, having fun? Yeah. I love it. He's yeah. a beautiful boy. My wife Are you molding crazy. him in your image? <laughs> no. I try to, but he's not buying it. He doesn't, he's not. No, he doesn't like to watch anything I do. He likes, there's one scene on Full House where a monkey's spanking my butt. Your kids would like this. <laughs> <laughs> that he likes, but anything else? No, he watches. That I like, of yeah. course, yeah. Yeah, you never get, you see your dad get, I never saw my dad get spanked on the butt by a monkey. <laughs> you, um, do you share wisdom or is he too young for oh, that? Oh, no, you ha well, you have to, right? He, one of the things, you know how these, they're, they all have ADD, these kids. Do this, do that. Well, and they don't. It's just, we, it's just that he's three. Yeah, yeah, really? okay. yeah. Don't worry. Like, this, There's caveats with all these rules. Is you that, know when they say, like, oh, this is, person has the attention span of a three-year-old? That's it. That's why. Oh, that's because right. they're, yeah, exactly. I tell him, but he, like, he'll do something and then he'll quit. I said, no, no, you can't. You got to, once you, you know, try, try. If first it don't succeed, try, try again. And Caitlin just yesterday was saying he was at a uh, play date and he went to kiss some kid and the kid didn't want it. And he said, well, my dad told me, try, try again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one's too smart that for you, smart I think. One, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got some trouble on your hands. <laughs> wow, that's He's interesting. Charming. He's too charming. I want to embarrass you for a second, oh, and I want to read something that um, uh, over the summer, Robert Lloyd, the writer from the LA Times, a very good writer, television writer, wrote a story, and the title, the headline, uh -huh. is "John Stamos is one of TV's most underrated actors. It's time he received his due." You sure my mother didn't write that? <laughs> He, what a nice thing. That, that yeah, it's it's really like, I mean, it's like an examination of your whole career <laughs> and your, and really, and I think, you know what, he's probably right. And because I think maybe looking like this has made people take you not so seriously. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, I'm getting hypnotized. I'm falling for you right now. <laughs> he wrote this. Uh, he is more, he being you. Uh, he is more interesting looking than a Clooney, Pitt, Affleck, or da oh, Damon. Please. Definitely Damon, yeah. yeah. His smile <laughs> is wayward, going this way and that. And Wait a minute, that's like, what do you mean going this way? That's like if you say someone has pretty blue eyes, one blue this way, one blue that. <laughs> that's an insult. I, listen, I know that you're getting, I can see you're getting uptight about being complimented, but I just want you to relax and listen. Okay, take it in. It's nice to have somebody say something nice. His smile is wayward, going this way and that that his bottom teeth are just a little crooked, feels almost like a radical authenticity in a Hollywood star. I have a confession. Go ahead. I got him fixed. After this article? Yeah. <laughs> you lost your radical authenticity. I don't care. <laughs> so this article that is 100% nice from beginning to yes, end, yeah. what you took out of it is I need to fix my teeth. Well. He said they were way worse. I see why your son's not listening to you now. <laughs> this makes more sense. John Stamos is here. His show is called Big Shot on Disney Plus. We'll be right back. John Stamos is with us. His show, Big Shot, is on Disney Plus. Season oh, one yeah. is on now. You've been renewed for season two. Thank Congratulations God. God. on Thank that. You. That's a that's a good thing. You saw the show, right? You saw I it? did, and it's really good. It's Thank uh, you. you know, it 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 you play this girls basketball coach, a coach of a girls high school team. Right. I know you know this, I'm telling the audience in case they don't know. <laughs> who was, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were like an NCAA men's basketball coach and this was like a step down for you. You yeah, thought. that's what he thought, yeah. yeah that's but it thought. wasn't. I mean, here's a guy who goes in with these preconceived ideas of what you know, female sports should be and I'm just blown away at what a, you know, a crusty old jerky, you know, uh, his ideals were just so outdated. 
And it's beautiful to watch the guy, you know, just sort of change like that and play out through a whole season. Um, and I'm so grateful to Disney for picking it up because, you know, with these streamers, there's so many analytics and this that, that didn't work here and it worked here and people took three Ps in the middle of that and they couldn't, and it was kind of like, I thought it was a slam. I was like, well, you know, we don't know. We're trying to figure it out. I said, oh God. And I appealed to them. I said, this is what Disney is to me. It's, it's inclusion, it's heart, it's, it's guts. And they had the guts to go, okay, we're gonna pick it up. We're gonna give it another season. Yeah, well, and it's popular too, sure. Well, so <clears throat> you also have this podcast that I know is like very, it's something very uh, close to your heart. It's a mm -hmm. podcast about, and I don't think a lot of people, especially younger people, even know about this, right. the kidnapping of Frank Sinatra Jr. Yeah, it's, it's this fascinating story about this guy who was just at the, you know, the lowest point in his life, and he's um, in his car overlooking Catalina, and, and on, the, on the radio, God's voice came and said, kidnap someone to get out of your troubles, and no women and no children. And he did it, he pulled off, he, he kidnapped Frank Sinatra Jr. Um, and Who was how old at that time? 19. Yeah. And it, it's a, a crazy story because nobody knows about it, but I don't, I think, well, he was, sh he was shot at quite a few, this guy, Barry Keenan. He's 81 now and my good buddy. And it's, look, I felt like I was, I didn't want to glorify it because I have a son and it's like the idea of, you know, ki yeah. kids being kidnapped is terrible. But he, it's really a, I got to take a real deep dive into this guy. And I always sort of pitch the story as the Marx Brothers meets the Coen Brothers. And it was kind of funny and wacky. But the truth is, <clears throat> you know, he had, he was mentally ill. And I got the time to just sink and see how low a person has to get and, and the extremes that they go to to get out of it. And it's a really fascinating study in, in mental illness and, you know, a guy who was plagued with, you know, Catholicism and doing the right thing. And just, he wanted to get to that state of grace. And that's interesting. Does it surprise you at all that Sinatra didn't have him killed? He tried. He tried three times. The th and the third time, these hitmen started getting so old. You know, Sinatra on his deathbed supposedly said, you get that guy, you know. Really? And, yeah, and the, but the hitman, it was like Cato, like chasing, for 50 years, that he was shot at three or four times. The last time, the hitman who was so old, he had him in his sights and his colostomy bag broke and, <laughs> and he missed him and, you know, that was it. That's true? Yes, that is true. You know what, I know you're a big Sinatra fan. You yeah, know what would yeah. be a wonderful thing for you to do for Frank? But Kill that guy for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just as a dying, like, nah, you know. Nah. He's, uh, he's made amends, you know, he's made his amends. He, uh, he's made amends, all right. <laughs> but we, we could tell the story because, uh, you know, Frank's dead, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, Frank has passed away. And, yeah. Yeah, although it sounds like Frank didn't have a lot of firepower behind him. <laughs> no. uh, you know, we all, I think, thought Frank would go like this and nah, you just, no, just no, collapse no. and it turns out yeah, he, that, he, uh, he, yeah, maybe yeah. Not, not as well connected. Interesting story, though. Yeah. Check it out. Well, it's very good to see you. Thank you. Nice to John see you. John Stamos, everybody. His show is called Big Shot. His, his podcast about Frank Sinatra Jr. is on all the podcast networks. That's right, yeah. We'll be right back with Russell Westbrook. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.